to talk. I am the DRPP director uh, for uh, DE and BRI, which is the developmental research pilot program. Um, and I have uh, put these uh, points together and uh, on my own, as well as in uh, collaboration with the research development committee that includes um, Dr. Hakeem Laval at DSU, uh, Amanda Hernan at Nemours, uh, Mark Blenner at uh, UD, uh, Claudine Jerkowitz, as well as Suzanne Milbone. Claudine is at CCHS and Suzanne is at Wilmington VA. I, there is a longer version of this talk, and I have shared it with the people who share RFA materials with you at your institution. Um, that would be Ranita at Renemores and Ross Budzuski at CCHS, and I'm the one who will share materials with you uh, if you are at UD. Um, I have also shared these materials with DSU already. Um, so there is a longer version of this talk, but given that we have only 20 minutes today, I am going to breeze through these slides. Uh, and the first um, slide is really on the mission and goals of DNB. Our goal is to build biomedical research capacity in Delaware in many different ways. And one of the ways we do it is by uh, providing support, research support to new and early stage investigators at universities and uh, health institutions within Delaware by providing them the funding they need to start their independent research programs. And these programs can be in any area that is relevant to NIH. We do not have a foci or, you know, we are agnostic to foci. So if your work is relevant to NIH, please send your application to us. And the goal eventually is to help you collect pilot data so you can compete for um, other applications that you send to NIH. So R15, R16, R21, R01, or other grant mechanisms that are NIH, or other um, extramural grants to other funding agencies. All of those could be captured within your application. So tell us, uh, you know, which institute at NIH you would be wanting to send your application to, what type of application you might want to send in the future. That way there's an easy connection to NIH and also other extramural um, agencies or funding uh, sources that you want to apply to. The other important goal for DE INBRI is to support training of students, primarily undergraduate students. So these sites um, where we support the pi uh, pilot awardee, the PI, uh, we hope that they will take on undergraduate students as well as graduate and uh, postdoctoral students uh, and help train them uh, through their research. The one new sort of goal for the next cycle of DE INBRI, so this is a a grant that has been funded for almost 20 years now. So this award was given many, many years ago and has been renewed uh, several times. It's going up for renewal and uh, it'll be re reviewed in November and we'll get our uh, results uh, in spring and the grant will start again for the next five year cycle in May of next year. So May 2024, that's when the pilot awards will actually begin. So the application cycle is right now, but the application, the grant work will begin in May of next year. And the goal for the next five years was to try and balance out funding across institutions. So we want to not only support faculty at universities like DSU and UD, but also clinician and research scientists at our network institutions at Nemours and CCHS. Uh, we want to encourage Delaware data science collaboration. So that's a new initiative. Uh, we are hoping that you will either try to access the four databases listed in the RFA, or you might have access to some EHR data within your institution or a collaborating institution that will share data with you and making that research ready for you as a PI to look at and analyze. Uh, we want to support that. We also want to support research careers of uh, PIs over multiple years, if possible. Again, that requires you to go through the review process and for your grants to be awarded. Uh, but if possible, if you apply to a grant this year, let's say the pilot project, next year we have a mechanism called research projects, which is a two-year award. And we would consider some of those to be uh, perhaps the pilot awardees who've done, um, you know, 
um, good work this year. So we want to be able to support people over multiple years if possible, but that's not a given. It will go through, you have to go through the review process. OK, so what are the different project uh, mechanisms? So this year we are giving 18 pilot project awards and there are three different mechanisms which I will cover next year on for the next four uh, cycles. We will have around 11 awards of the pilot project type. So pilot projects are 40 K per year for one year next year. So the second year as well as the fourth year of this whole D and B um, uh, award, we will be offering research project grants, which are two year awards. They are double the amount, so 80K for two years. And so uh, you can directly apply to those grants next year. If for some reason you don't want to apply to pilot projects this year, or you can apply to pilot projects this year and then next year also apply to the research project. But it does involve a separate independent review process uh, to be awarded those other larger grants. This year and for this talk, I'm focusing on the pilot projects that will be awarded this year. The requirement is that you explain at least 25% uh, research effort is within your workload. So um, your chair will have to write that letter and say uh, that yes, this uh, person devotes 25% or more, whatever it is you devote towards uh, career development and research activities. Um, the mentor um, uh, is required to be involved if you are a new or early stage investigator. So you want to find that person now and include them in the application. And there are parts they have to fill out, like the mentor's letter, um, and they need to be submitting that for you. Um, the three types of awards are takeoff, booster, and Delaware data science. The reason why we try to split the takeoff from booster is to give, um, you know, have a pool of applicants that are new early stage investigators. Because if there are senior investigators and they're competing with new early stage investigators, generally they will have more pilot data and their grants would be scored high. So that's why we've tried to separate these into two mechanisms. The first one is the takeoff where we are funding new research uh, directions, nascent ideas, you may not have pilot data for this. You might have some pilot data. It's your uh, decision and what you include, but you do not need to have pilot data for these types of the takeoff mechanism. Mm -hmm. And these are mainly the, for the new and early stage investigators. Those will be prioritized for takeoff awards. The booster grants are for data for studies that have some additional data already. So you have pilot data that you can show, and now you're trying to ask the next question. Um, it could also be that you're responding to certain grant reviews that came back, and you're trying to collect pilot or feasibility data. So these are open to both the new and early stage investigator who is generally the person who does not have an R01, so that's a new investigator, or an early stage is somebody who has um, uh, been, uh, you know, uh, finished their terminal degree within 10 years from now. Um, and then the senior investigators are those who have an R01 currently or have had it in the past. So those are the individuals that can apply to booster. And then D data science are these uh, awards where or uh, projects where a particular data set will be analyzed. Those data sets are listed. There are four data sets listed in the RFA. So the UD Medicaid claims data or the DHI and payers data. CCHS EHR data or Nemours speeds net data. So we'll prioritize projects related to these, but we will also consider uh, projects that are looking at other types of EHR data um, at your institution or at an institution that you're able to collaborate with. And again, because the focus here is to be able to extract and make data research ready, uh, these awards are open to new investigators, early stage investigators, as well as senior PIs. So who can apply? 
uh, very quickly. If you're a PI eligible at your institution, you can apply. You do need to show that you have 25% research effort in your workload. And um, you, again, you know, as I said before, depending on the award type, a particular type of investigator is prioritized or multiple types can apply. Uh, the mentor needs to be somebody who is an established PI in your area of research and has a record of grant funding. So if you have uh, problems finding such a person, please ask. Ask your contact at your institution or me. We'd be happy to help you uh, connect with somebody within our network who can be your mentor. And those uh, who already have an idea grant, so let's say you're a PI or a co-PI for some reason on these other idea mechanisms, or if you are a target investigator, you're getting funding for a project in this period, May 2024 to April 2025, okay, other idea grants, you sh ideally shouldn't, you, then you cannot be eligible for DE and BRI at the same time. Is there anybody trying to ask a question or it was just uh, noise? Okay. Sorry, it was me, it was just noise. Okay. Actually, um, Anjana, yeah. if, if it's okay to ask a question, the mentor, you said established record of funding from NIH or um, any, any, any federal funder like NSF or Department of Education or really NIH was what we're talking about. Thank you. Um, NIH would be good because they would be able to help you navigate the NIH world. Um, but if not, you can include the other investigator perhaps for one purpose because they are expert in your area and maybe add another one to help you navigate the NIH world. Like, you know, you can have a mentoring team. It doesn't have to be one mentor, but you can have your primary mentor perhaps as the one you directly connect with or have worked with, have a relationship with, but try, I think it would be valuable to have an, uh, an investigator who's familiar with the NIH world as your mentor. Thank you. Um, so I will not go through a lot of the steps. The two main steps are letter of intent is due on September 24th. It mainly asks for the information on people involved, the project itself, it's more like an abstract. And then if you have reviewer rec recommendations at that point, go ahead and give it to us. The template for the letter of intent is now posted. You can use that information. I was updating some files up until this morning. So if you can download the files and folders now, that would be great because some of the files have been updated. Uh, this is for the UD faculty. For the Nemours and CCHS faculty, the files are given to Ranita and uh, Ross Badzuski, and they will be able to share all the materials with you. I've shared exemplars of past grants as well as templates to use for uh, some of the files that are, you know, unusual, that are not. Um, very easily explained on websites because the RFA itself shares a lot of websites that explain the different grant sections and the grant exemplars give you examples of how you can write your grant. Uh, but there is not a template for everything. I can quickly go through which files have templates. The letter of intent has a template. Um, and yeah, you want to keep it short, one or two pages. Um, the full application is due October 22nd, and we are looking for a cover letter, again, giving broad context and impact of your study. If you have more suggested reviewer names, feel free to add there. Um, we will try to take your reviewers as well as some other reviewers and um, uh, make sure that we have a balance of reviewers. Then there are other very standard sections within the NIH application, uh, public health relevance statement, which is few lines, and a regular abstract, which is the project summary. There are biosketches in the NIH format. We've given you an exemplar of that. Dr. Duncan's biosketch has been shared with you. 
Um, budget and justification, we've given you three different grant exemplars. One basic science and one clinical science has everything in it. So you can refer to the budget and justification section there. You can ask more questions to Don Everhart, who's our budget expert. Um, the specific aims and the research strategy is the heart of your grant. That is the one that scored. Everything else is important, but it's not being scored. Uh, your you know, bio sketches, I would say, are really important because we, that tells us whether you have the expertise to do this work. But the specific aims and research strategy are scored and are the important part. And so spend a lot of time on that. Um, the other sections, again, there are exemplars of grants, so these sections are covered there. Undergraduate inclusion plans should be talking about um, you know, how your undergraduates will be involved in your research. The chair's letter is primarily confirming 25% research effort. If there are other bullets I had added there, I have removed them. So that's a very lean and quick letter you can get from your chair. The three, um, the two bullets marked in green have uh, templates provided to you, and some of those were being updated up until this morning. So please use the files that are there right now. Um, and those also have been made lean. We've tried to reduce information that we are asking for. So hopefully this is easy for you to do. Um, there are also templates, uh, exemplars provided for the mentoring plan. So hopefully that is helpful. You want to write around a one to two page letter. Hopefully it's not too burdensome, but you want to work with your mentor to write that letter, both the IDP and the mentoring plan. If you can work with your mentor to write that, that would make it more convincing. Other support is any other funding you have. Um, there is a standard format for NIH, and that link is provided in the RFA. Uh, download that file and list any other support you have. If you have startup funds remaining, please add that as well. Uh, the one thing we did want to do is prioritize individuals who have less and uh, support and are under-resourced, but we don't know who will apply. So go ahead and apply. If you have an application, you've been trying to submit you know, in at two different agencies, go ahead and apply here and see if uh, that uh, is scored high. The other sections are human subjects, vertebrate animal use sections. Um, those exemplars are also given to you within grant exemplars, so you will know how to fill those sections out. The clinical trial forms will be required for anybody who is doing human subject research that is providing some sort of treatment. It can even be you know, two conditions within a session that a person goes through where one is more uh, is a better version of, of uh, our treatment offered versus another. If you have anything like that, you have to fill out the clinical trial forms. It doesn't have to be a full RCT. And if you need help with that, I'm happy to help you. Amanda Hernan, who's on the RDC, has offered to help uh, you know, understand how to budget for animals and do any kind of animal-based research. If you have questions about that, I can help you connect with her. Um, if you had an, uh, a prior IDEA grant, then you want to report on successes from that, any presentations, any papers that have come out of that. I have tried my best to make templates for files that are, uh, you know, complicated to follow. Your site liaison or myself have copies of those files, but please use it for your own writing purposes. This is somebody's independent grant that they have shared with you. Uh, please do not distribute or post elsewhere. Use it for your own purpose. And this is the website that is uh, going to accept by uh, Dean Bree applications. It's the PyStar RFX system. You might have used this system for other grant mechanisms, but this one is different. This is specific to Dean Bree. So go ahead and create a login and then look at the LOI request. Uh, and then in a few, uh, after that LOI request is um, done, we will also post the full application request but you do need a separate login for this uh, PyStar link. 
And so this part I will try to breeze through. We will use NIH style review processes. Uh, again, the details of this are explained in the longer video that has been shared with you. I won't go through that here. The one thing I will uh, emphasize is that for D data science awards, we are pri prioritizing D health data and the extraction and analysis of that. And for the other two awards, we will prioritize new and early stage PIs um, and also under resourced faculty. Again, I have no idea who's applying. So if you have an application, please send. Um, <clears throat> so these parts we hope to uh, review in the months of November and December and have the um, awardees determined by January. There is a just in time process, so there will be documents we will ask of you after that. The IRB approval document, data use agreement letters. If your bias sketches were not as well done, we'll give you feedback to improve that. Uh, we think that that might help strengthen your other grant applications that go out to NIH. So we'll give you feedback on that. And data management and sharing plan plans are something new with NIH. So we kept it towards just in time documents and are not asking for that right now. And your grant will start somewhere in May or early June, hopefully, because that depends on when the actual INBRI grant starts. Um, and if you are delayed in giving us these documents, then your start date is delayed. So please try to meet the March 15th deadline for uh, just-in-time documents. So right now we are taking, uh, you know, offering help. If you write your specific aims page and look for feedback, we will try to give you more feedback. Um, we will connect you with a near peer to support you in your grant writing. So if you're looking for help, please ask. Um, and as I said, in September, by the 24th, the LOI is due. The full application is due October 22nd. And these steps I have already discussed. This is a quick list of core facilities. The, this is a little updated compared to what is posted, the link that is posted in the RFA. So feel free to use this if there is anything here in terms of instrumentation or data science resources that are valuable to your project. Feel free to contact them and understand what the costs are. And you can budget that in the grant if that is um, possible within a 40k grant and that's it these are the contacts for you to connect with if you want the materials the templates and exemplars and i'm happy to take any questions thank you thank you very much Anjana. um so, so for folks on the call i i just i lost power in the middle of the call so i don't have the ability to stop the recording um, marissa is going to try but if not um just so you all are aware when you ask questions it will be recorded, but we will delete that off of the YouTube link. So uh, if anyone has questions for Anjana, go ahead and open.